you for just placing in us in this place, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship him. It's not hard. Just worship him. Give your voice over to him. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Don't let the troubles of this world get you down. Worship him is what he's asking for you. He's asking you to worship him in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We worship your name, Father God. We thank you. We praise you. Satan, you can't have my daughter. Satan, you can't have their husbands. Satan, you can't have our wives. <laughs> Worship him. Satan, you can't have these men. You can't have them. You cannot have these men, Satan. Satan, you can't have our boys. You can't have our boys, Satan. I got a phone call this weekend. A lady saying her son was cussing her out. And then he got physical with her. She had to call the police on him. And they told her to put him out. Satan are after the sons. Satan is after the men. I left you on last week talking about Rebecca. And Rebecca's name means to, she's able to bind up. So I need you women to stand up. And I need you just to start binding up some things in the name of God. That Satan is not allowed to attack the men. That Satan are not allowed to tuck the daughters. That Satan cannot have our boys. Satan cannot run roughshod on God's people. I need you to start binding up some things in the name of the Father. The name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. You got to be able to bind something. Rebecca knew who she was. She was not afraid of Satan. She was not afraid of his tactics. She bound up some stuff. And men, do we understand that I ask these women to stand. You can sit down, brother. I ask these women to stand because I want you to be in the place of Rebecca. That you can bind up some stuff on this earth. That you have the spiritual authority to stand in a place and bind up whatever Satan is trying to do in the earth. But you got to understand who you are in Christ. You got to understand the power that he placed in you to able to stand in the place of Rebecca. She wasn't afraid to open her mouth. And watch this. She came from a place or a family that did not know God. She was in a family that was cursed and that did not like God. Her family did not enjoyed the things of God but she stood in authority against all opposition because she understand who she was in Christ you got to do it women whatever spirit that hovers over these men or men in general you got to be able to bind it and send it back to the pit of hell and never come against these men again you got to stand in the spirit of authority that God placed on you women. Bind up some things that's taking place in this earth. Cast out the demons that's placed over these men. Not knowing how to handle your finances. We bind that and send it back to the pit of hell. Not be able to love a woman lest God ordained you to love them. We send that to the pit of hell. Not be able to be a light amongst the dark. We send that to the pit of hell. We bind up some things in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind it up. 
and God has placed that authority in you women to stand strong. It does not have to be your husband. It does not have to be a friend. It just has to be a man. And you want to see them doing right. Bind it up in the name of Jesus. Come on, ladies. You got to do it deeper than that. God wants to hear your voices. God wants to hear you st that, that you're standing in authority for these men. I'm tired of seeing us men get attacked. I'm tired of seeing these boys run the streets and gangs take over their lives. I'm tired of seeing our young girls abused by a man that tells them they love her and he doesn't care nothing about her. We got to stand up in the spiritual authority that God placed in us. And women, you got to stand forth and show unity that God has placed in your lives. Rebecca. God says stand in her place because he given you the spirit to bind things in the earth. I, I come to understand that I wouldn't be where I was if God had not sent me a wife with the spirit of Rebecca in her. She's standing strong to make sure that I won't, I'm not dead and in the grave. That's where I should have been because I was nothing good about me. She stood for where God had me to stand and, and have do the things that God wanted me to do. The spirit of Rebecca that's placed over her. Testing. Okay, it's back on now, Tony. Testing. The spirit of Rebecca is over your lives, women. You have the spiritual authority to send things that takes place in men's life back to the pit of hell. You have it. But you got to know who you are in him. And you got to know what you're dealing with. Say that! You cannot have. These boys, these men, the daughters, the husbands. You had the authority to tell him he has to let his hands off of them. In Jesus' name. Hey, have a seat. Have a seat. I just had to get that out. It has been eating at me all week. We got to get to doing the things that God has ordained us to do. This ain't church. You know, you can't play. Like when you was kids, you played house. You can't play church. This is a life or death matter. And you got to be able to come to the, the forefront of what God has ordained you to do. You got to be able to stand strong in a time of adversity. You mothers know what it takes. You don't want nothing to happen to your babies, your boys, your girls. I want you to stand strong for the men that's in the earth, just as if you stand strong for your children. That's the spiritual authority God has placed in your lives. So if you have your Bible, Steve, please go to Genesis 24. And when you get to it, please rest to your feet. I got a lot of feedback. Or is that just me, Elder Tony, being loud? Okay. I try to keep my emotions in check. We left off with men. We got to get one. This is part two. Men, we got to get one. And we're going to show you what that get one is here later. Hey, man. Genesis chapter 24, starting with verse 13. And it says, Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher, that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed to for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And you, you can underline that in your Bibles. And some of them might say show favor to your master. And it happened before he had finished speaking that behold Rebekah 
who was born to Bethel, son of Malachi, and wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. I want to stop right there real quick. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. I want to show you how God operates. The servant of Abraham went praying for a wife for his master, Abraham's son, Isaac. But it said before he even stopped praying, she came. See, once you understand the, the God-given authority in you, once you start praying and asking God for something, before you even finish praying, God can deliver what you're praying about. But where is your faith to receive it? You don't ain't got to wait 10 years. It don't got to be five years. It don't even got to be two minutes. Before he finished praying, Pastor Wendy, it was answered to him. Before, Deke, before you even thought about what truck you wanted, God said, I already have your prayers answered and it's going to be yours. Before you even stop praying about how successful your business is going to be, God said, I have already ordained your business to be a success. He said, only qualifier I got for you is to do it my way. Amen. The same for you, brother. He said, I can make asphalt rain out of the sky for you. He said, but the thing is, you got to do it my way. And we learned this morning in Sunday school that when no one followed God's directions, God blessed them. So God is saying to you that you got to follow my direction and know my what? What, what we got to know, uh, uh, evangelist of that? We got to know his voice when he's talking to us. Follow it. God said it's that easy. Before you stop praying, he can already answer it. He can already answer it. But where's your faith lie? What does your faith line up to? Verse number 16. Now that the young woman was very beautiful to behold a virgin, no man had ever known her, and she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let him, her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. Down to her hand and gave her a drink. At the time of the of this of this scripture of the writing, the servant of the Lord was leaning on the well praying and asking God to do shine favor on him. And before like I told you before he finished she appeared. And to, to you it might not mean nothing. But the name was important. Because God said, I'm not just going to send you old, any old body. I'm going to send you something that's going to enhance what you're asking for. He sent Rebecca. And I told you her name meant to buy. So God said, I'm going to send Isaac a woman that's going to be able to take care of him in his needs. I'm going to send a woman that's going to be able to pray for him when he comes up against hard times. I'm going to send him with somebody that he don't even imagine that he think he can have. So it was important. That's why God broke it down and said that I sent Rebecca. He wanted you to know the importance of the woman that he was sending to Isaac. Just how important is your wife to you? He ain't just send you any old woman if you're following his lead and asking him. God ain't going to just send you some old run around the mill. He, God said, I'm going to bless you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send somebody that, that compliments you. That's going to bring the best out of you. 
Not somebody that's going to make it hard and a struggle for you, but somebody that's looking to improve on what you already have. Verse 14 says, it says that, Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down her pitcher. He said, not just offer me water, but offer my camels water also. Do you understand that it takes 20 gallons, 20 gallons of water to fill a camel? <laughs> 20. And she had a pitcher. And she, she didn't get, he didn't ask her to fill or feed his camels. He asked her for a little water. But what she did, she said, I will feed your camels water also. See, what? look, man, this is what you got to understand. You got to understand this woman was, she had the water on her shoulder. So she's tell, he's telling me right there that she can already shoulder the load. You don't want a woman that, that, that can't already shoulder the load. She showed him that she can already take care of what she needs to take care of. She, she was shouldering the load of water already. You don't need somebody that's going to complete you. You need somebody that's going to compliment you. She said, I can handle this all by myself. She said, but watch, I am willing to help you. You got to understand this. She was not only willing to help him, but do you understand the camels was in representation of his business. So if she's saying that I can shoulder this load already, but hey, I'm willing to help your business. Somebody missed that. Come on now. So what is it telling me is that not only does she have a heart for him, but she has a heart for your business. She's going to be able to instruct you and help you when, when you need to get rid of somebody because she's going to say he's not right for your business. Or she's not right. She's already shouldering the load. I said I wasn't going to get excited, but I'm sorry. I'm excited about God's word. Because it shows. We got to look at this. Quit just reading this. But you got to understand what the, the representation of what she stands for. She said, she's got the water on her shoulder. She said, I don't need a man to complete me. I'm already taking care of business. I got the house already. Look, and then she said, she got, she got water and he don't have nothing. Ah, I think he just missed that one, brother. She got water and he has nothing. So she offers him some water when he asked. And if we look at it, she never, never emasculates him when she said that I'll give you water. She never took his manhood away from him because he didn't have any. She was willing to shoulder the load with him. <laughs> I think we're missing this. Am, am I in the right service today? Am I in the right house today? Let's look at it. Verse 14. And let it be that young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink. And I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness or favor to me is what he said. She is shouldering the load already. He knows this was the right woman. She is expressing and demonstrating that she can handle it on her own. That she knows that she can shoulder the responsibility. She is carrying water. Watch this. 
with no assistance. With no wave. No aid. She is handling her own weight. Hey, y'all quiet today. She is handling her own weight. She is focused on what she needs to do. All the time she is focused on what she needs to do. She isn't thirsty. She isn't even depressed. She's not hard up. She's not trying to get, watch this ladies. She's not trying to get the attention of nobody. She ain't trying to get the attention of no man. Because she understands she has her own call. She has her own assignment. She has her own gifts she brings to the table. And that's why you compliment each other. She, she isn't waiting on any sugar daddy. She doesn't need nobody to compliment her or complete her. She needs somebody to, to compliment her in, at her best. Is all she needs. I, she just needs somebody that's going to enhance what she already is. And that's what you need, somebody to enhance what you already are because she's showing that she can she already ha can carry the load pastor Wendy she can already candle carry that load men have to find somebody that's already actively I see it again actively involved in their own purpose Actively involved in their own purpose. You don't want a woman that her whole world is you. You don't want that kind of woman. Because you know why? That's the kind of woman that will go through your phone. <laughs> that, go, that will go into your Facebook account. That, that's the kind of woman that's, that have, that's doing their own. I spy series. <laughs> but you want a woman that already understands her call because she trusts you. Amen. She's not insecure what she does because she understands the call and the pull that's on her life already. The purpose. Please. Please, men. That's single. Do not go after a woman that you are her whole world. She already has to have a purpose and a drive in her life already. And understand the purpose in her life. Who is confident in who she is. Doesn't have time for the okie doke. She's carrying the water and she's not dropping anything. So I, I read the scripture and I bring it to life. And, and, and into it, it never says that she dropped anything. So that tells me that she's able to carry the load and won't fumble. And she don't really need a man to do the work for. But she's happy to share the load with that individual. But it says she did. She had never said that she dropped anything. And I started to understand the things of God. If, if, if it said that she dropped something, it would have said it. So she shouldered the load and didn't drop anything. Watch this, she said. And she understands her worth. She's telling the man, she said. And this is in today's society how women should say, I don't need a man to pay my bills. But if you want to pay my bills, you got to marry me. Because if you want to pay my bills and don't want to marry me, you, put, you think your name is on the lease. And that you can come and go as any time you want to go. 
But she said that if you want me, you got to make this legal. That's what dropping the water to me meant. She said, I'll share in with you. But you ain't shacking up with me. We got to do this thing legally. She understands her worth. And understand who she is. Because she has order and balance in her own life, mother. Order and balance in her own life. She's already maintaining the household. She is already keeping herself up. She has already got her own goals and aspiration in her life. She has her own vision. But watch this. Even though she has her own vision, she said, I'm not afraid to share with you. That's how she showed her, got the water down and said, I'll share with you. But you got you to gotta be able to do this thing right, man. You have to find a woman that can go out and become their own chapter of their life. Or write their own chapter in their life. That's what you want. She can write her own chapter, but she shares her book with you. Amen. Children is trying, she's trying to raise her children. She ain't got time to play games. Man, we got to understand this. She looks beautiful while she's going down. Watch what it says. And it happened before he had, verse 15, finished speaking that, the, behold, Rebecca, who was born to Bethu, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder, verse 16. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold a virgin and she filled her cup. Watch this. this. This is crazy for 2017. She's saying that she went down and filled the pitcher and came back up. Man, I want to tell you something. You want a woman to, be, to understand that she's been down, but she can come back up again. She bounced up. Hey, hey, we might be eating out of a paper bag today. But tomorrow we're gonna have we're gonna have a full course meal. We're gonna have that 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 steak that uh, uh, brother Chuck puts on the grill, because she understands the spirit of bounce back. You don't want a woman that can't bounce back, because if you're down, she's gone. But look, in 2017, when she understood that she was helping, and they said that she was very beautiful. She understood that, hey, even when I leave the house and I'm working hard, I'm still presentable. And she don't have to go with name brands. Because she understands name brand clothing, uh, Sister Diane. <laughs> she, don't gotta, she understands that, hey, we might be on a budget right now and I still am beautiful no matter what I wear. It's not about the clothes that makes me. I make the clothes. But let's share something that the writer wanted us to know. And I want us to know. Doing all this, it was never about her sexuality. Because he said she was a virgin. So what that tells me is, when, when, I, when you're looking for a man, it ain't about your sexuality. You don't got to use that. To get a man. Because he says she's still a virgin. And she's still pure. He said no man ever knew her. So what it's saying. Women you don't have to use. Your body to get a man. Know your worth. Know your call. Know who you are. So sometimes we get this thing mixed up brother Gregory. We get this thing confused. It, 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 and we go straight after the woman's sexuality and she gives in. And we can't, you can't give in, women. Because you got to understand that if you want this, you got to marry this. It ain't about shacking up with them. I know it's kind of tight today. But we got to understand the call and the push on our lives, and especially the call and the push on the women's lives. 
mother and angel and, and minister to me. I'm basically talking to you because you're single. But you got to understand, this is not a lottery item. And watch this, just because you let them in, don't mean that you're getting this. Because you understand your worth. She steps out of the house that she is God's poster child for favor. She's going down to the spring. God bless you. But listen, she said, listen, listen. The writer in verse 16 says that it, it was important to tell us, repeat it to us, that she guarded her sexuality. She guarded it. That's why they put it in there. She ain't throw it out. It's not a commodity that everybody can share in. Real women of God, because they hear or heed the insight of God straight. And understand that there is no call greater than he is on their life. None. That she is for the night. She is not for the night, but she is for the life. <laughs> this ain't a one night call. You got to marry this thing is what she's saying. But has the faith enough to know that she isn't staying down is what the key is. She knows she ain't going to stay down. I believe the God that I serve and he's going to bring me out of every situation that I'm in. Verse 17, it says, And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. A little water deep. A little water here, a little water there. But, but then she, the thing that turns and stuck to his mind is that she didn't stop with him. She stuck and looked up for the camels also. Camels. That means that she had a heart for his business. See, says, Justine, you want to back you in all the things that you do in your business. A woman that has a heart for your business and what your accomplishments is, is a woman that has a heart for you. Their heart is for you. I put a lot on her plate. And she prayed and, and she stuck with me. So that means she was a, the right woman for me. Amen. She wants to feed the business. She wants to feed your ideals. She wants to feel, feed the importance of you. She wants you to know that. And watch this. Let's go to verse 21. And the man wondering at her. So he was looking at her. He, stuck, he stepped back. Watch this. He stood back. And while he stepped back, he's just watching her. And as she goes through her, her, her movements in her day, he's just watching her. What she's doing. Just watch her. As she does her business. He's watching her. After he observes her, after he prayed and asked for the confirmation, that's when he pulls out the gold. And that's when he get, pulls out the bracelet. But watch this. He, he, what, he had to watch her first. And to make sure that her heart was in the right place. He just watched her as she went about her daily activities. He wanted to know how did she operate when she think nobody's looking. How does she operate when, 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 when I'm not watching her? How does she move? How does she do? What does she do when I'm not watching her? Does she have the right character? Does she have the right heart? Is her mindset right? Or she can only do right when I'm watching her. So as he sat back and watched her, thank you. As he sat back and watched her, and he seen that, that she was able to help him. Not, watch this. Not knowing that he had enough money to buy the well. 
But in 2017, watch how messed up we have this. You want to take them, you want to take women, you want to take the man and give him everything before you know what his heart is like. You want to show him everything that you got before you understand the heart of the person. You want to take him through your house and show him everything that you got. And that joker's in an apartment. Not saying nothing wrong with apartment. I'm sorry. You know, his mama's basement. Let him drive your car. And don't even understand why he doesn't have one. But you want to show him the gold and everything. And man, that's us. We want to show the women everything we got. Before we know where her heart is. Not saying that she's a gold digger. But we got to understand where the heart is. Do you understand the call that's on her life? Do you understand the feelings that she has for you? Do you understand her purpose in you? Stop showing folks everything you have before you understand who they are. <laughs> We do it backwards, buying up everything before we even have a commitment, Deke. <laughs> Walking them through the house, showing them everything that we got. And don't even have a commitment from them. No commitment at all. No assessment of the heart. Watch this. What's, what's interesting to me is... That she showed him what she had. And after he showed her. He showed. After she showed him. He showed her. What he then had. But guess what. She didn't have. Nowhere in the scripture. Does it say that she had to show him. What she had. You know why. Because she was the prize. She was the prize all alone. I want to leave you with a few of these things here. In the Old Testament, God always uses a woman as a representation of the church. That's before Jesus Christ came. When you, when you, when you hear them talking about women in the Old Testament before the walking of Jesus Christ, that's a representation of the church. So the, before the entrance, personality characteristic of what the church has. Men. <laughs> I want to apologize to you right now. I didn't mean to come to you through the back door. But it's not about picking the right woman. It's about picking the right ministry. You said, wow, didn't you? But if you're picking the right kingdom ministry, a man that picks the wrong ministry will never get close to God. But when you pick the right ministry based on, on how you feel in that moment, you still pick the wrong ministry. But a ministry that will help push you I said a ministry that will help push you into your destiny. That is where God is aligning you up to be. When you have the understanding, even when you are in a cursed place, God has the right blessings for your life. When you understand that if you're in the cursed place, if you line yourself up with God, he still has the right blessings for you. He has to change his circle of friends. This is what we talked about in Sunday school. A man that does not change his circles of friends will not change. If he continues to be around the wrong influential people, he's never going to change his life, and his life will never change. You can't always hang out with the boys. Because the boys are not always going to want to do what you want to do if you're trying to live for Christ. 
<laughs> you got to find the right people, the right circle. It will change your desires. It will change your behavior. It will change what your purpose is. A man that, that wasn't groomed for responsibility will just visit a ministry. He will never become active in that ministry. Because you treat your ministry, how you treat your ministry is how you're going to treat your woman. <laughs> ah, somebody, somebody want to hear that. You have the problem sowing, then you have a problem giving to your woman. If you have a problem shouting, you have a problem expressing to your woman. If you have a problem sewing, so, uh, uh, showing up some of the time in church, then you're going to have a problem with showing up all the time in your wife or your woman's future. You're going to show up some of the time. How you treat your church is how you're going to treat your woman. How he treats God re re uh, uh, reflects how you're going to treat you. How he treats God. Scripture says, follow a man that follows Christ. Woman, that's the only time that you got to follow a man. As he follows Christ. That's what Scripture says. Follow a man as he follows Christ. That is the only time you're supposed to submit. A man doesn't know how to submit, does not know how to lead. A man that does not submit, know how to submit, does not know how to lead. But when you find a man that is after God's own heart. Mm -mm -mm. Let me tell you. If he's cheating on God. I can leave that one alone. <laughs> I can finish right there. If he's cheating on God. How do you expect him to be faithful to you? How a man treats God is how he's going to treat you. I'm done. I can't say no more to that one. Give God some glory in here.